Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com. And today we're going to talk about long ties, leg ties, lace backs, and under ties. And this is all synonymous in my world for what you're looking at here, which is a long steel um, piece of wire that you can purchase. Usually when I purchase them, I'm looking for ligature ties would be the official word for them. They often come in three different diameters and I don't have it in front of me right now, but I usually go with the middle one if that helps you. So if you get the one that's too light or too thin, the gauge of it, it's kind of useless. But if you get the one that's too stiff or too heavy, it's hard for you to kind of get around it, you know, and really adapt it like this around the edges of the brackets like this and really get in there. So you want to get the middle one whenever you order it. And off the top of my head, I'm thinking it's like, oh goodness, I'm not even going to come up with gauges. But anyways, when you go to order these and look up ligature ties, you're going to see three different sizes, get the middle one. Um, and you'll get used to what it feels like in your hands. So there's two major reasons that I use ligature ties, long ligature ties. Well, actually there's three. I'm going to put the, the two that I use right here most commonly. Um, so number one would be this one right here. This is where you are taking the whole, um, the whole arch or even just a segment of the arch because you want to keep spaces closed. So first thing you would do is you would use your power chain, right? To close spaces. And let's say once we've closed it, we all know that with braces, once you close a chain, um, any, it, it naturally comes back once you close a space. So it always wants to come back. That's just muscle. It's just memory of the, of the fibers and the teeth and the gums. It's going to bounce back. Everything always comes back to its original force. So if you use chain too early in treatment, which is why sometimes I really strongly suggest that you follow the steps that we use in orthodontics. So first phase of braces is always a line and level, right? So that's what this is like basic day one in orthodontic residency. Align and level means making teeth straight and leveling out the deep bite and the, the teeth. So you're basically doing first and second order movements. Um, second phase is when you're moving up to the heavier wires and that's when you're doing space closure and fixing bites and moving around spaces to fix bites. Okay. So for example, if your patient was a class one everywhere crowding patient, you may never need power chain, but sometimes just having braces and wires and going through the aligning and level stages and phases, some spaces that were never there start to open up. And a lot of times patients freak out, you know? So I always like to preemptively let them know is, hey, I know you didn't start with spaces. I know you probably noticing a space is popping up here and here and here. Don't worry, we're gonna close them. It's something we do more towards the end when we're in heavier wires. Because if we try to do it on too light of wires, funny things happen. So I always like to say that. That way they're not getting super anxious about it. Now, I know a lot of people get excited and they want to start closing spaces early. But what ends up happening is when you use too much power chain on too light of wires is that it's the terminal teeth. So if you're power chaining in the front, the terminal teeth might be 7 and 10. It might be 6 and 11. If you're power chaining the whole arch, it might be the molars, will roll in over time. They will, if you're not on a heavy enough wire, they will spin. And that's what you start to see a lot of times on the molars is you'll see them rolling in. So that's why a lot of times orthodontists, once we close a space, we like to use the long leg tie instead. Now, usually what I do, so that way you don't have, it's not a force, it's just passive. It's like we close the space, now we're keeping it closed, but there's no additional force because there's always a force on a power chain, right? But there's no force on the leg tie. So it just holds this there's no side effects of using this so it's better long term once you close the space so just a little trick that we use so we use them in front we use them the whole arch now what i generally do is i don't do this this is not my picture is i'll take the wire out and i'll do it under the wire and i usually do multiple twists this is this is really not very useful what they did here um you can see here i actually had this illustration made by a um, medical illustrator because i just couldn't find a good one um, but you can see here that the wire is twisted multiple times in between each teeth. And this, you know, this might be a little bit overkill. I don't know that you can necessarily get six twists in between each tooth, but you can get a fair amount of twists if you have the wire out. So you can at least get four or five if you, especially if you have the thinner wire. So just, a, just a little thing to keep in mind. But I, so we talked about keeping space closed and preventing 
the terminal teeth from rolling, especially on a lighter wire. The other main reason that I use a long leg tie or an under tie or any whatever word you want to call this is I use it for anchorage. So that is like where we're trying to play tug of war and we're trying to pit multiple bigger teeth against one smaller teeth to help close space in a certain direction. So we use this like, for example, this would be on top, right? We have the six, the five and the four. We're pitting them together to maybe retract a canine. So now we've got a huge tooth and two moderate teeth against a moderate to big tooth, but three, this is more like four, win over one, right? So then we'll put the power chain on, but these are all laced together. So these shouldn't slide forward. It's almost like having a bridge. And that way you can slide those front teeth back. We can do the same thing on the bottom. And if you wanna watch videos a little bit more about this, you can go into my YouTube, which is Street Smile Solutions, not YouTube in general, but my YouTube, Street Smile Solutions, put that in the search bar. Once you're there, you're gonna see multiple playlists. Check out the playlist for straight wire or braces because all these videos are in here about different ways that you can close space in different directions using Anchorage. So you definitely should check out the class two clay space closure and the class three space closure mechanics videos. Okay, so these were one and two reasons I'd use a long lick tie. And again, lick ties are probably like 10, 15 bucks for a pack of 100. It's really cheap. These are not expensive things you can keep in your office. Um, other thing I use it for is you could use it for um, if you didn't want to have uh, an elastomeric O tie, if you wanted to use the steel tie instead, you could use it on a tooth. I normally use the short ones. Again, they come in three different sizes, different gauges. I use the short ones because I think the long ones are a pain. <laughs> <laughs> but you can if you want to use that. I mean, way back in the olden, olden days, um, a lot of times they would use individual leg ties on every single tooth. Or we can still use it, especially if we have a patient that's going out of town, you know, like they're traveling for a few months or going to camp and we don't want the, the leg ties to relax and get sloppy. We can go ahead and do individual stainless steel ties on every teeth. The nice thing is they stay nice and tight and they don't stain. So you're essentially almost making it like a daemon bracket, you know, and that there's nothing to change. You just do that on a bigger wire and just let it go. And the patient will keep aligning, you know, for months and months and months, and it's totally fine. So another little trick, just it's time consuming to put them on and take them off. But definitely I've been known to do that if I had a patient that was going away for a period of time and we didn't have, obviously, Nowadays, you know, if I know they're going away for three, four, five months, I would definitely want to use either self-ligating brackets or I'd want to use um, uh, aligners like Invisalign or something like that. This wouldn't be my first choice, you know, anything with a rubber O-tie. But, you know, now you know what you can do. So hopefully this was helpful and a use of maybe a, a supply that you have in your office and they never go bad. So um, definitely you should stock them. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs>